there are a lot of tourists who are involved in this space where RFID is an upsell to an existing technology. They may be a software provider, or they may be a large systems integrator, and, and these are folks who have a handful of projects. So they're doing RFID to enable something else, and, and we were just talking a, a little bit about some of the casinos, and uh, the, these, these chip manufacturers, uh, we've got a CIO from one of the casinos in the room here, and he said, you know, the chip manufacturers don't want to, we don't want to buy RFID chips and create, uh, you know, cobble together things. We want to buy a solution. So you see the chip manufacturers who are, are basically looking for a solution and then offering it out to the casinos. So those folks that have limited use cases that are generally specifically designed to what their main focus or what their core business is. Uh, and they're focused on programs. So we'll, we'll touch on the difference between, between that and, and the specialist in just a second. But you can think of the big systems integrators. If you, if you look at IBM, who uh, is, I don't think they're presenting at the show, but they've got an RFID division, which is less than one-tenth of one percent of their overall business. You know, it's, it's like everything else. They feel like they have to offer it because their clients are looking for it. So uh, they, you know, they do, and there are a lot of folks who are in that same camp. Then you've got fo focused uh, companies that are RFID specialists. These are the folks who now, the industry is mature enough that they'll have done tens or dozens or, or even hundreds of different RFID projects. And they've done a wide variety of implementations. So many of you, Ramon was talking about his out of stock uh, concerns. So that's one specific use case, out of stock in a retail store. He should be able to go into that trade show floor and talk to a specialist and say, not have you, but how many out of stock projects in retail have you worked on? Because I don't want to have you learn on my dime. I want you to be able to understand my business and then apply this technology to it to really have a, a quantum change in how we do things. What oftentimes happens is because of people who aren't focused on the technology, they're rather focused on the programs, they buy into what you're going to hear from the vendors out there. So a vendor will say, okay, we make uh, this super special tag. It works on everything. It's like, it, and Chris has a, a slide he'll show you later. It's the, the Ronco guy. But wait, there's more. It slices, it dices, it does all these things. That can be very frustrating because they don't have a foundation in the technology to get, the, to get it right. The specialists are the guys out there, and you'll see a difference when you go to booths. You'll see people who are doing really well in this technology, who are very enthusiastic, who can be talking about their different deployments. Those guys are the specialists who are having success at it. So that, try and keep in mind who you're talking to and what you're talking about uh, as, you get, as you go through the trade show, trade show floor. So what really matters are your own requirements. You've got to be able to define what your requirements are so you can start to search for the right answer. And, and you know, if we go back to Boyd and what I was talking about this morning, what you've got over, over within the Boyd camp is Boyd was looking to design that F-15, that F-16. You should be doing the same thing within your RFID program. You can choose the wrong plane. Right? Just because you're buying a plane doesn't mean it's, it's the right plane. So make sure you're, you're choosing the right plane to get those type of benefits. So in order to do that, you've got to know your requirements. Is, is your requirement to go out and be in a dogfight and be uh, winning a dogfight, or is it to go out and fuel other planes that are out there doing the fighting? So think of it in that analogy. Value is critical. So Daniel Connolly from our shop is going to talk about putting the business case and the use case together. But you've got to be able to sell this up the value chain. What happens, oddly enough, is the biggest value often comes from what we refer to internally as latent data. And this is a very important point when you're building your business case, but it's also one of the most difficult to quantify. And I'll give you an example. Uh, at one of the aerospace manufacturers we were working with, we're tracking sheet metal as a, as a work in process, as it goes through its different stages. We eliminated 10 million barcodes annually. Annually, 10 million scans of a barcode. So a huge return on investment from getting rid of that, but the latent data is really where the huge value turned out, and, and nobody knew it. Nobody expected it. It wasn't in the business case. But what you happened, what what you had happen, was you had this Kanban system where things would go from station to station, and station number seven had an on-time rate of 99.8 percent. 
and they thought, well, this guy's perfect, you know, he's, he's, he's a black belt, he's perfect, we can't do anything to improve him. Put in the RFID system, and what happened was, the sheet would come in, he wasn't manually checking it in until he was starting to work on it. So it looked like, on their data, they had these sophisticated software, they said we can't improve our process any here, but we want to eliminate those barcodes. It looked like, received, started work, finished in 22.7 minutes, with, a, with an average uh, completion of, of you know, X amount of time. Looked perfect. In reality, what happened was, it would come and sit until he was ready to start working. So he wasn't doing his check-in procedure right. So he fundamentally changed the business process by getting that data. So that latent data was never, didn't even make it to the business case. No one even realized that as, as part of it. We, we had something similar with one of the healthcare companies we worked with. Moving things from, from one place to another in these uh, uh, DNA, biological based uh, testing things, if they were out of the, um, if they were out of the freezers for more than 15 minutes, they're useless. These are half a million dollars of, of testing samples for these DNA projects. So if they were out of it for more than 15 minutes, they're useless. So they very tight controls. One of the RFID system, because they made one mistake. And they said that one mistake is going to pay for our RFID system in this lab. So, it, so we want to prevent it from happening. Well, their insurance company came in and they said, hey, that's tighter controls. That's a better system. Show us how it works. All right, we're going to lower your rates. And that, that never even came into it. So you've got to be creative, not just in your thinking of the solution, but in the value. And active, passive, ultra wideband, low frequency, high frequency, they're just technologies. And again, you know, this is a guy who, who started an RFID company. I'm telling you, it's not about the technology. It's about the value and it's about what it can do to your business. There are three key questions. The first and the easiest to sell upstream is how can you use RFID to increase revenue? There's a lot of opportunities out there to increase revenue using RFID within your company. We get some folks from uh, a logistics companies, one of the global logistics companies that are, that are you know, sort of top three in the world in what they do. And they're thinking about, hey, you know, can we use some of this technology to increase revenue? That's the easiest sell to your CFO or your COO or what have you. Say, look, we're gonna get operational efficiencies. Yeah, that's number two. We can improve the operation. But you know what? There's a revenue opportunity here too. So if you think like that, you think how can you drive more revenue use the technology, it's an easy way to sell it. And then can you solve existing problems in a more elegant, uh, <coughs> excuse me, a faster way. So if you look at how the RFID value chain breaks up, there's generally a hardware layer and a software layer, and both of those have a services component. So the hardware layer can largely be thought of as tags, readers, and then ancillary equipment. That ancillary equipment might be light indicators, it might be uh, uh, motion detectors, it might be racks to hold things up, it might be specialized tables for, for checking procedures. There's a whole bunch that can go into there. The data layer is an edge application, so something to, to manage, monitor, and, and keep the devices from an RF perspective optimized. There's a, a field called middleware. In the middleware, we've got Kevin McDonald from our shop who's been at Odin for about three and a half years now, almost four years. Before he was at Odin, he was the chief architect at Sun Microsystems for their middleware platform. So he designed their whole middleware suite and, and then joined us. He's gonna spend a, a whole session on middleware. And then, then there's your enterprise apps, the SAPs and Oracles and WebSphere's and, and that type of thing. The service layer falls on top of that with four primary things from the hardware, design and deployment, what do you do afterwards? A lot of people forget about the support and maintenance. They get the system in, and, and RFID goes counter to my, what my, most CIOs are trying to do today. Most CIOs are focused on data center consolidation. Right? We want to take all of our servers, and we want to pull them into one location. We want them where the smart people are, we want them where the redundant power is, we want them where the, the uh, uh, extra uh, bandwidth is. So we're going to consolidate. RFID goes completely against that. They're, they're very sophisticated servers with RF devices, and they're most valuable if they're out on the edge of your network. So if you're putting RFID readers in Waterloo, Iowa, or, or uh, Bentonville, Arkansas, or wherever, they may be quite remote from where your IT experts are. So you've got to think about what that means in terms of support and maintenance. 
And then, of course, planning and budgeting, uh, developing business case, that sort of thing. 